Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Bio 347, Biostatistics and Experimental Design. This lecture is the nature of data. There's going to be two parts. This is part one. Um, we just talk about the really about variables. All right. So let's make sure we check everything off on this list we're going to define here. So statistics and parameters, uh, both of these terms I've seen have two meanings when they're used. One is, so a statistic, uh, deals with a sample. And a parameter deals with the population. So statistics are estimates of parameters. Um, I've also seen these things where a statistic is uh, a summary. of data, for example, uh, the mean standard deviation. There's also test statistics like chi-square. There's a t-statistic, right? And parameters are, um, the way I've seen these, these are, um, estimates associated uh, with variables. What's a variable? So I'm going to come back and give examples to clarify here. So what is a variable? It's an attribute. Right. An attribute means uh, something you're going to measure, and it can potentially vary from observation to observation. Okay. So let me give an example of parameters as defined as estimates associated with variables. And this I want to introduce now because it's going to come up again and again and again. So it's an important, important concept to understand. Just like erasing the board. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. So, for example, uh, you're doing a study, you want to know, does uh, drinking caffeine known to increase attention span, does it actually increase uh, things like grades? So what you have, what you want to know is, grade is going to be your response variable or your dependent variable. And you're going to have some equation where it's the amount of coffee. You're going to have an intercept, a slope. So, intercept, slope. And this is how much coffee you have. And then you're going to have some air. So, there'll be some variation not associated with these variables. So for example, if you just have uh, people with different learning abilities, right, when they get tested, uh, even on the same exams, uh, they can have the same amount of coffee, doesn't mean that they'll all get the same grade. Would that be nice? They just drink more or less coffee depending on the grade you want. So there's gonna be some error associated with it. So you collect coffee data 
you examine the grade, what you are estimating is this, right? So in this case, you have three parameters, okay? Three parameters. So that's what I mean. Uh, these are estimates associated with a variable. So here's the variable, okay? And there's error associated with that measurement and there's an intercept, right? Two, two things are observed, the rest are estimated from those observations, right? And then with this, you could do things like once you figure out these relationships, you can tell somebody um, what their grade might be based on how much coffee they had. Once, if this is a reliable estimate, or maybe it's crap, right? Who knows? Um, all right. Precision, accuracy, and bias. Precision. Is repeatability. Of a measurement. So, uh, for example, uh, if you remember putting in um, and your freshman bio, you probably had something like chlorophyll, right? And you put it in a spec, spectrophotometer, and you got out some reading Repeatability would mean if you take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in. Are you getting the same readings? That's precision, okay? That's precision. So hopefully you have precise instruments, um, which means they're giving you the same reading. It could be the nature of this, right? As this stuff moves around, maybe the molecules are um, creating some sort of variability, or it could be the spec, the way it measures, right? So precision can come from the system or your measurements. Accuracy, though. Accu oh. It's fun being left-handed. Accuracy is the the closest, the closeness to the actual measurement, right? So uh, I came up with a system of, of measurement and uh, what I did is I had my tenure binder, so three ring notebook, and I had all of these papers in there, all right? Stuff full with my evaluations and publications and whatnot. And um, I was snacking, and what I thought was how many uh, Oreos? And if you know me, you know that this is not an unreasonable measurement. The question is, how many Oreos could I stack up? How many did you need to get um, and if you're taking notes, don't write this down. I called them SOU standard Oreo units. And my one tenure binder was like five or six. So that's, that is uh, the measurement, but it's not very accurate. What I, I could have gotten an actual ruler and measured it in millimeters. 
Okay, I could have gotten a pair of um, right. I could have gotten a pair of calipers. That looks like a watch. Could have gotten a pair of calipers and measured in the um, even smaller measurements, right? Down to the nearest uh, hundredth of a millimeter. If I so, I'll get. You know, let's let's just say it was. Make up a number here. Fifty-seven millimeters, I got the calipers and it's 0 0.2, 0 0.12. And if I got an even finer instrument, I could keep going, right? To the actual measurement of how high this binder is. So accuracy is only limited by your instrument, okay? It's only limited by your instrument. And there tends to be a trade-off in precision and accuracy in that if I was to measure, uh, get another stack of Oreos out and count them, I'd always come up with five, with five, with five. With the millimeters, I might bounce between, uh, let's say 57 and 56, right? So my repeatability is even less. With the calipers, you know, binders, they, there's a little bit of plastic bubble on the edges. Maybe I crimp down right? A little bit more, a little bit less. And so uh, every time I measure, it might bounce around these numbers. Okay. So um, usually there's a trade-off between accuracy and precision, right? And what you do, if you have um, low precision, you're going to build up error, right? So what you want is consistent measurements to give you reality uh, at the same time, not increase your error, okay? We're to the point where it's not informative. All right, so, do, 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 eraser. Sadly enough, there goes the Oreos. All right. Next, uh, bias. Bias I can consider to be systematic error. And the example I like to give is if you look at a tape measure, right? You you pull it out and you have a little doodad that hangs off and usually it's riveted. And if you look, pull next time you're home, uh, mess with it and you'll realize that you can actually move this back and forth, okay? And the reason why you do that is you are counting. So if you were to look at the distance to some shelf or something you're putting up you're putting up something or measurement to a wall this doodad it's going to take up space okay and that little bit of wiggle room allows you to count for that so when you push it in it can actually overlap if you were to put that doodad on this side and pull it it actually pulls it back a little bit so that doodad okay can create some bias if you don't realize that every time you take a measurement, okay? So if you take measurements on here, right? It may be adding like a 16th of an inch. All right. So, and the same thing would happen like if uh, you were to use a meter stick and somebody had sold off the, the first centimeter, right? You'd always be off. Um, the way that these things are sort of summarized, if you're shooting at a target, right? 
any other cluster. Here's your bullseye. It's not turning out like I'd hope. This is precise and accurate. That's supposed to be a P. Um, you could have Yeah, a little bit better. So this is precise, not accurate. And actually, if you look at this, that's the bias, right? Because systematically, uh, your shots landed um, higher than, than what you were aiming at, okay? And then you can have A very imprecise. So this is me throwing darts, right? So that is not precise and not accurate. All right. Um, all right. The nature of variables or types of variables, let's say. The first categorization is qualitative versus quantitative. So qualitative right. qualitative measurements are those that aren't associated with a, a direct measure. Right? They're not empirical per se. So these are often scaled. like uh, aggression. Not sure what's happening with my pen. Happiness, you're happy. Um, and you can create dummy variables, right? So a dummy variable uh, turns a qualitative measurement into a number, right? So it could be like, you know, are you sick or not? On a scale of one to five, how happy are you? Right? So these, you don't look at a person and you measure this not thing. It's a, it's an attribute that doesn't occur as a number. It's not something you measure. All right, quantitative measurements are those you measure. And, you know, it sounds like these things are very black and white, but there is, there is like a little gray area we'll, that you'll pick up on. All right, going forth. All right, so let's talk about categorical variables. Oh boy. The pen is not uh, stopping writing when I lift up, so that's a bit of a pain. All right. Binary. Binary variables, by meaning two, occur as um, they only occur in two states. True. False. So this is a qualitative measurement. You can have live. So let's put a slash here, live, dead, uh, infected, wait, infected, uninfected, and so on, right? 
has a gene, doesn't have a gene, has the mutation, doesn't have the mutation. So that's binary. Binary is a type of categorical variable. Nominal. So nominal variables um, occur discrete and uh, no, let's say, connection between our values. So for example, I'm sitting at my house watching my bird feeder and I'll see a finch, house finch, song sparrow, right? So there's no connection between these, meaning there's no finch point five, finch point seven. It's a finch or it's a sparrow, okay? Um, so all binary variables are nominal. Not all nominal variables are or binary. So because I could have a hawk, right? Uh, when you're dealing with, um, let's say you're looking at uh, different drugs, right? So you can have aspirin, right? Tylenol, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's no connection between these other than your choice to use them. Okay. Ordinal variables. are nominal variables that you can put into order, right? So if you look at small, medium, large, extra large, right? So <clears throat> these, if these are t-shirt sizes, right? There are categories because you're either a small, medium, large, or extra large. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, they often do um, uh, emotional states. So you could be um, sad, neutral. and happy to learn how to turn that off. All right. An important thing to know is not only are these not always mutually exclusive, not necessarily, is that sometimes they can go from one thing into another. And what I mean by that is Um, okay. Let's look at our t-shirt sizes, small, medium, large. Uh, you can actually turn this into um, a continuous variable, if you actually say like our smalls, um, the shoulder are 30, 37, 42. <sighs> so, and then you can imagine you can actually have sizes in between, right? So these aren't always, and if you can imagine like giving doses, right? So a small dose, a medium dose, and a large, a large dose of drugs and you get some response, right? 
these can be meaningful because you can connect these and say, well, if this is 10 cc's of drug and this is 15, you could do things like say what's 12, what's 13, and what's 14. So in here, they are uh, nominal, but you can convert them, okay? All right, counts. Just like what they sound. These are integers and they are one, zero, one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and frequency is a relative count. So you can say how many white blood cells Do I see, right? So you have a cell counter, it's counting cells. And then you can say most counts are actually measured as frequencies. Very rarely do you just have counts. And by what I mean by relative counts, you would say um, my white blood cell count per um, something like 10,000. Uh, red blood cells, or maybe even a thousand. Okay, so what you're doing is you're standardizing your count to make it uh, comparable among observations. So counts are just how many things you see, and then frequencies are you put some bounds on it, right? So you counted, give you the difference. You have counts of when you did the corn purple smooth, purple wrinkled, yellow smooth, yellow wrinkled. And then what you did was, so you had like 57, 23, 27, and then five, and then you add them up and then you say 57 out of whatever, right? The total, that becomes your frequency. Then let's talk about continuous. Continuous measurements, okay? They take on any value. Um, so if you uh, said one and two, there's an infinite number of measurements between one and two. And again, that's gonna be determined by the accuracy of your measurement, right? So anything that's measuring continuously, uh, the, the uh, precision and accuracy plays a role. All right. And then what matters is, there's a couple different types is the meaning of zero and then the nature of the intervals. And here's what I mean. So ratio, things like length, and then something measured in kelvins. Because zero length means there's no length. Zero kelvin means there's no energy in your system. The intervals, so if you have a 10 centimeter bill, and you measured 20 centimeters, this is twice as much. For Kelvin, if you double the Kelvin, you double the energy. Compare that to interval. Okay. Here the zero is arbitrary. So degrees Celsius, we chose that's the 
temperature of that water freezes, I think at sea level, something like that. If you double the Celsius, it doesn't mean you double the heat. Fahrenheit is the same way because if you double from 10 degrees to 10 degrees, actually those scales are different, right? So you can't have one indicate twice the heat in a system as the other, right? So those, that's an arbitrary scale. So the intervals are not as meaningful. All right. And then uh, circular are things like degrees, so north, south, east, west, and also time, right? These are circular measurements. The thing about time and the reason why these are different is at midnight, you only move, right? If you move a minute, you can be in a new day. But if you are anywhere else, if you move a minute, you're not a new day, you're just a minute behind or ahead, right? Same with north, south, east, west. So if you are over here, you are on the west side and you you can get up here and just move a degree and now you're on the east side, right? Where if you move a degree anywhere along here, you're still on the east side. So there's always some weirdness with uh, circular measurements, right? And there's ways to get around that as well or to account for it at least. All right, there's part one. And uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email.